All right, thank you for checking out this video. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the lessons learned I had in Utah. Just a couple weeks ago, we were hunting in Utah, about a really nice buck, nice first time buck for uh, my boy to be there and be a part of, not my first buck, but a uh, really cool experience for him. This is the forky we shot. For reference, this is the fork I shot last year in Colorado. So you know, it's definitely had a little more mass to it, a little bit bigger, cool little forkies. Um, it was it was awesome, and it was a last day buck. So it's a pretty cool story behind that. But yeah, I want to talk through what went well, what didn't go so well, uh, things that I learned on this trip. Uh, the first day, I didn't take enough food. I had enough snacks and stuff, but I didn't bring any like wholesome good food like a sandwich to carry me over for lunch or tortillas or like anything hearty <laughs> other than like trail mix and cliff bars and granola bars and just stuff that's just going to tie you over uh and i just some sometimes you just uh you wake up in the morning i normally have everything dialed normally i have a sandwich made the night before that i just throw in my pack sometimes i forget that sandwich but uh normally i'm more prepared and this time i just wasn't I uh, just took what I had, you know, hiked out there, and I was pretty deep out there. It was pretty gnarly and steep where I went, and it would have been great to just stay out there. But I didn't have a lot of food, and so I came back. Um, cost me some time. So uh, it's kind of like the lesson learned. You don't know what adventure, like what your little hike, what your little like creeping over the next ridge is going to turn into, which brings me to my other lesson learned of. Uh, basically we were ready to leave like it was 11 o'clock in the morning the last day of the hunt and uh, i was like spencer it was a good hunt we need to get back to camp we need to drive 30 minutes 30 40 minutes back to camp take it down then head back home four and a half hours and he's like no dad we gotta go we gotta keep hunting like please we gotta get a deer we gotta get a deer let's just hunt until two o'clock so okay so we literally turned around like we're ready like gonna hang head up the mountain turned around headed back in uh started glassing some more spots um it was midday um but we were still finding deer and we went to a new spot that we hadn't glassed before we hadn't like explored we parked i took out the 15s uh, my regular binos and my gun that's it spencer had his binos that was it we didn't take water we didn't take our backpacks it was not smart i didn't take my ammo wallet my extra bullets i uh i just wasn't wasn't thinking i was just like okay we're just gonna pop it here for five minutes glass it come back that's never how it works so we uh hiked kind of up on this ridge to look we saw a deer it was like we bedded it was 927 yards out like man it's all alone i bet that's a buck let's go check it out and we just kept creeping closer and closer until it was like 500 yards and <laughs> we were really far from the from the vehicle no water no food no packs no first aid kit, nothing. Uh, no extra bullets. It was not good. Uh, luckily, I was able to use bullets that I had and take the animal out, but it was a close call. So, uh, which brings me to my other lesson learned of, I didn't use really the right hash for my shot. So my shot was 372 yards. That's a long shot. Uh, it's closer to 400 yards than 300 yards. And in the heat of the moment, I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna use my 300 yard hash, which is my second hash down, and just aim high. When in reality, I should just use 400 and just made it, I uh, just made the shot right there. But you don't think about that when you're kind of rushing, they're at almost the top of the hill, they are, they're already looking at you, you're running out of time. And it's just like, I should have done that, but I didn't. And so, which ended up me shooting him low and shooting him right in the leg, not good. Uh, the second shot did damage uh, further back, but the first shot could have been better if I would have just used common sense and used my right hash. Um, and after that, uh, after we ran, got up the hill and he snorted and I literally I yelled at my boy, said, hey, I'm going after him. It's him. Sprinted up the hill, sprinted out. I saw him running. Uh, I've already shot my two shots and I only have one left. So uh, this was a win. I was able to make my last shot count. Um, and, and the deer was running and I couldn't get him to stop. I ranged, I know in the video I said I ranged him at 179. I ranged the tree at 179, which he was going to go right behind and, and just, I threw myself on the ground, bipod out, 
They're like, this is it. He's going to go into the trees right after this. So range came out, boom. And, uh, you know, I was confident in that shot. It was 200 yards. It's going to hit right on. Um, and I made it count. If I did make it count, we would have been in trouble. Uh, my second shot did do damage in uh, a little far back. But I would have had to go get another gun or get another bullet. Or I had a really small pocket knife that was about... It was a little bit smaller than this that I would have had to go use and try to kill this this deer. So uh, we really got fortunate that I made that last shot count. Um, those were the main lessons learned. Didn't bring enough food. Should have brought my pack. that had my water and everything we need. That had uh, bullets. Had everything I need. Um, and uh, I should have used the right hash. So part of that is, you know, we, we got to the shooting range and you zero in your gun. All right, zero to 200 yards. Where does it hit at 300? Where does it hit at 400? Practice at all these like exact distances. It's really good. My dad's like, you know, this is why you need to practice at those different ranges at 372 or 350 or 420. Um, so you can get confident in these, these little bit different yardages because out in the field, that deer is not gonna be perfectly at 300 yards or 200 yards. Uh, and this one was 372 and it threw me off and I just went 300 yard hash. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's good to practice in different, uh, different positions, not just from the bench, because you're not going to have a bench when you're out there. Uh, I do like to practice from different positions, sitting in this shot. I was sitting, I didn't have a rear support. If I didn't have, have my pack, I could have put my pack there. I could have shot off the front of my pack and used like a trekking pole and would have been a little bit more solid. But, uh, at the end of the day, we got the deer down, we brought him home and we were successful. Um, a couple other wins I could think of is just, we didn't give up. We, uh, kept hunting. We were seeing deer all the way through midday, still out feeding. Um, it was rare that they were bedded up. Um, another win that we had advantage is that we brought two vehicles. So instead of me just being kind of limited to wherever the one truck could go, I brought my Subaru and I was able to spend midday going out and exploring new country, um, and doing a lot of, you know, one-off walks and stuff, covered a lot of ground while uh, my boy and my dad were hunting a different spot or they're back at camp. Uh, it really made it nice. And plus my dad went home by just like a day early. And so we were able to stay and hunt versus having to pack everything up and go. And also the advantage to two vehicles is that you, you can bring more gear. So we had plenty of room for all of our stuff and uh, we were comfortable, it was nice. And I'd, I'd say probably the last, there's a lot of wins to this, but another win that uh, comes to mind is we change it up. You know, a lot of times you have a plan and you keep trying your plan and it doesn't work. On my elk hunt in 2019, if you watch that video, we saw a, a good bull come in to water the first night and he never came back. I kept sitting on that water, just hoping he'd come back. And we take hikes during the day and stuff, but like our main plan was just sit at the water that bull or another bull would come back. We were just hoping, and they never did. And we should have changed up. We should have moved camp. We should have gone further. We should have done something. The tag just kind of faded away. Um, so we spent time trying to find these bucks that we found the first couple of day or first night. They didn't show up. So after like day two of that, we went to the west side of the unit, went way north. We checked all the different spots that we had on my maps. Uh, there was more pressure up there, didn't really see anything, saw some more deer track. Uh, then we went to the east side of the unit and were able to get into a bunch of deer, not a lot of big bucks. Like this was the biggest buck that I saw on public land uh, during the hunt. And uh, but we were able to see a bunch more deer because we changed it up. We moved, uh, moved around, we tried different things, tried different tactics and we found deer. So uh, that's, this is not advice, giving you advice, but that's my tip or my advice is to change it up and go try different things. If something's not, if something's not working, go somewhere else. Um, so if you haven't seen the hunt, go check it out. I'll put a link at the end of this video. I'll put a link in the description. It was a great time. Uh, we got that buck right before I got to my car to basically after I shot the buck. Um, because we had covered so much ground, I just left Spencer under a tree with a radio and hiked in 
I hiked back to the vehicle and brought it back. I got to my car right before two o'clock, right before his two o'clock cutoff, where he said, let's just hunt till two o'clock, Dad. And it was worth it. It was awesome. And uh, glad we brought, brought a deer home. Glad he could be a part of the whole process. So hope you learned something from this. I'm learning and I learned a few things on this hunt that I will remember for the next time. So stay safe out there. Have a great rest of your year and uh, have fun later. Let's just keep staying. Let's keep going until two o'clock. He pushed me. So... <sighs> Dude. You gotta celebrate with some oddballs tonight. Oddballs on Netflix. You haven't we seen need the... ice cream. Seven. Yeah, we got Good job, man. You think you ever want to do this yourself? Yeah. Okay.